Hello. Uh, so, in this lecture, we will review some of the basic concepts of solid mechanics that you would have learned in your first year of uh, undergraduate engineering course. So, uh, even though this course is on fluid mechanics as you can see here, however, uh, when we talk about flow in the cardiovascular system, the pipes or the tubes or the channels, the arteries, the veins in which the flow happen, they are not the rigid tube as we encountered in our day to day, daily, uh, day to day life or in the industrial applications. They are rather a uh, flexible tubes. So, in this flexible tube, the flow happens and the stresses that are applied on the channel wall because of that the tube is deformed or the channel wall have deformation and because of those deformation the shape of the channel is changed. Consequently, the flow behavior, the velocities, the pressure inside the channel will change. So, it is important to understand the stress strength relationship in the solid walls. So, we will briefly review the basic concepts which are relevant to cardiovascular, cardiovascular fluid mechanics in this lecture. Okay. So, uh, just briefly uh, let us look at solids which are elastic. So, the elastic solids or elastic materials are those when a force is applied they deform, but after the force is removed the material comes back to its original configuration or original position then uh, such materials are called elastic materials. So, for example, uh, if we have a elastic bar suspended from a uh, surface, let us say this bar is of length L and it is being pulled by a force say F then uh, as a result of this the the bar has the length of the bar initially was L naught and now it has become L. The change in the length of the bar is delta and A is cross section of the bar. So, as a result of this there will be the stress which will be acting in the normal direction. So, we can say the normal stress on this bar is sigma is equal to f over a where a is the area of cross section and strain epsilon is equal to delta over L naught. So, the elastic modulus E is defined as sigma over epsilon. Okay. For a elastic material, you might remember that the relationship between stress and strain sigma and epsilon is a linear relationship. And so, from this we can say that the slope is equal to the elastic modulus E. The assumption that we had here 
uh, that the material is homogeneous. So, homogeneous material means that E is same throughout the bar or throughout the material that we are considering. Isotropic material mean that the behavior or the elastic behavior is same in all directions. That is if the stress strain relationship is same if we apply a stress in the x direction or if we apply a stress in the y direction or the z, z direction. So, most of the engineering material behavior can be classified in these two uh, different uh, material behavior, ductile material as we can see here this is for the ductile material and this graph is for the brittle material. So, in the brittle material the relationship is almost linear and then it breaks on wherever uh, it goes through. Uh, and the first to yield stress and then uh, uh, a, at, at a certain value of the highest value the necking occurs and then material ruptures At the necking the area changes significantly. Okay. So, uh, these materials behave as an elastic material up to certain uh, limit which is called yield stress and after that their behavior changes. Okay. So, uh, when we define a strain, uh, we consider epsilon is equal to delta over L or L naught and uh, that delta is uh, we consider del uh, epsilon is equal to delta over L or L minus L naught over L naught. However, if we consider the strain truly, the so this is called engineering strain. Which we have defined just now in the previous slide. Now, the true strain if we represent it by epsilon, then the true strain will be sum of the incremental strains let us say a uh, small change in the length divided by the instantaneous length. So, uh, if we do that continuously then we will have this as integral d l over l and the limit from l naught the initial length to l the final length. So, that will be equal to l n L over L naught where L is equal to L naught into 1 plus epsilon. So, this is L n 1 plus epsilon. So, this gives a relationship to us that epsilon 1 is equal to L n 1 plus epsilon where epsilon is the engineering strain and epsilon 1 is the true strain and we can say that for small deformations that is epsilon is small epsilon 1 is almost equal to epsilon. Okay. The other point is that the materials which do not follow a linear relationship between sigma and epsilon. For them uh, there is not a constant value of elast uh, elastic modulus. Any number of biological model, uh, materials do not behave elastically, do not have elastic behavior. So, for such uh, materials one can define incremental elastic modulus. So, the uh, at one particular point the E incremental or the incremental elastic modulus is defined as 
डी सिग्मा ओवर डी एप्साइलन सो विच इज द स्लोप एट दैट पर्टिकुलर पॉइंट वेयर द इलास्टिक मॉडल इज बींग शॉर्ट ओके नाउ पॉइजन रेसियो सो वेन ए रॉड द फर्स्ट एग्जाम्पल दैट वी कंसिडर्ड वेन ए रॉड इज सब्जेक्टेड टू ए स्ट्रेस ए नॉर्मल स्ट्रेस देन द रॉड नॉट ओनली इट इलांगेट्स बट to conserve its volume the area of the rod also changes so there is because of the uh, normal stress let us say sigma x f over is equal to f over a there is not only the strain in the axial direction but there is strain in the transverse direction also so the poisson's ratio is defined as transverse strain divided by the normal strain and because it has the sign with it so uh, uh the poisson's ratio is mod of or the magnitude of transverse ratio and or the transverse can also be said as lateral strain divided by the or normal not in place of normal axial probably is a better word so the transverse or lateral strain divided by the axial strain so for example uh, nu is equal to epsilon y divided by epsilon x and if we consider the sign because epsilon y is going to be negative similarly this will be also equal to minus epsilon z over epsilon x for an isotropic material so one can write that epsilon x is equal to of uh, in case of a axial stress sigma x over e and one can also find epsilon y is equal to minus nu sigma y over e and epsilon z is equal to minus nu sigma z over e okay so this is poisson's ratio now we will talk about shearing stress and shearing strain so if we consider a planar surface in the xy coordinate system let us consider a planar surface so in this uh, it is subjected to a shear stress which is tangential stress tau y x tau x y tau x y so as we have discussed already in the fluid mechanics review that tau y x has two subscripts so y is the uh direction of the shear stress where edge y is the 
the plane at which shear stress is being applied so as a result of this shear stress the surface deforms by an angle and so the two angles the earlier angle as we saw that as pi by 2 the two angles are reduced by say gamma x y and the two angles so this and these angles are reduced by gamma x y and the two angles are increased by the same value so pi by 2 plus gamma x y so under elastic limits the relationship between the shear stress is tau x y is equal to g gamma x y where where g is called shear modulus okay so that is the relationship between uh, shear stress and shear strain and like normal stress and normal strain a relationship or a graph uh, can be plotted between the shear stress and shear strain and the slope of it is uh, the shear modulus. Now based on this uh, now we can write a generalized Hooke's law. So uh, if we have a cubic material or a general material which have a cubic shape and subjected to a three kind of stresses or the three stresses in three different directions sigma x sigma y and sigma z and uh, uh, different shear stresses then we can write using the principles of, of superposition that if the material subjected to different stresses to so sigma 2 so we can write sigma x is equal to or sorry epsilon x is equal to sigma x over e minus nu sigma y over e minus nu sigma z over e so the first deformation in the x direction is coming because of the stress in the x direction whereas the other two components are because of the two stresses in the y and z directions respectively. Similarly one can write sigma y is equal to sigma sorry epsilon y is equal to sigma y over e minus nu sigma x over e minus nu sigma z over e similarly epsilon z is equal to sigma z over e minus nu sigma x over e minus nu sigma y over e and one can also write uh, the relationships between tau x y is equal to g gamma x y tau y z is equal to g gamma y z and tau z x is equal to g gamma z x so one can remember in this case that the material is isotropic so the e and g they are same in all the directions okay now uh, for the polar coordinates because uh, in the cardiovascular system what we are going to encounter 
are the arteries or the cylindrical tubes and these cylindrical tubes it is easier to work in polar coordinates so in polar coordinates we have r theta and z so like cylindrical like cartesian coordinate the relationship in the polar coordinate can be written as epsilon uh, r epsilon theta and epsilon z they are equal to sigma r over e minus nu sigma theta over e minus nu sigma z over e similarly sigma theta over e minus nu sigma r over e minus nu sigma z over e equal to sigma z over e minus nu sigma theta over e minus nu sigma r over e. Similarly, one can write the relationships for the uh, shear stresses in the r theta coordinates. Now, one can also recast uh, these equations so that one can write the stresses in terms of the three strains epsilon x, epsilon y and epsilon z so that is just algebra and one need to reconstitute or uh, reframe these equations so as to obtain shear stress uh, or, or not the shear stress but the stress is normal stress in terms of the three strains. So that is left uh, uh, for you as an exercise. Now uh, we will look at bulk modulus. So uh, bulk modulus, so when we consider let us say a cubic volume and this volume has unit dimension the dimension in each direction is 1 so the v is 1 now after the stresses in the three directions epsilon x epsilon y and epsilon z uh, the strains are sorry uh, the stresses are sigma x sigma y and sigma z so the resultant strains are epsilon x epsilon y and epsilon z so the new volume will be 1 plus epsilon x 1 plus epsilon y into 1 plus epsilon z and if one neglect the higher order terms then this will be equal to 1 plus epsilon x plus epsilon y plus epsilon z so the change in volume delta v is equal to because the initial volume is 1 so the change in volume is epsilon x plus epsilon y and epsilon z and because the initial volume is 1 so delta v over v is equal to epsilon x plus epsilon y and v is the initial volume so v not epsilon x plus epsilon y plus epsilon z. Now we can substitute the values of epsilon x, epsilon y and epsilon z. So we will have uh, this is equal to 1 minus 2 nu where nu is the Poisson's ratio into sigma x plus sigma y plus sigma z. So uh, the volume strain which is the ratio of change in volume to the original volume or the initial volume is equal to 1 minus 2 nu sigma x plus sigma y plus sigma z. So one can see here that if the Poisson's ratio is 0.5 then delta v 
over v is equal to 0. If the material is subjected to uniform loading and sigma x and sigma y and sigma z are same, so let us say this is uh, in case of a hydrostatic pressure and material subjected to minus p then delta v over v naught is equal to 1 minus 2v we missed an e here 1 minus 2 nu over e minus 3p or minus p over k where k can be defined as e over 3 into 1 minus 2 nu and it is also called bulk modulus ok we might also want to remember here that the relationship between um, the shear modulus g is equal to e over 2 into 1 plus nu so this is the relationship between the shear modulus and the elastic modulus okay and you have the poisson ratio which relates the two okay so uh, until now what we have been doing is defining our uh, different modulus what we have done is define the elastic material and then the elastic modulus the elastic modulus for the material in which the stress stress strain relationship is not linear then we have looked at uh, the generalized hooke's law and uh, the strains in terms of the three different stresses uh, and then we have looked at the bulk modulus and the shear modulus so now uh, with this information uh, we would like to apply this to uh, a cylindrical tube. So, for simplicity let us think or let us assume that the cylindrical tube is of thin wall. So, our analysis becomes simpler and as a first approximation let us assume that the arteries which we will encounter in the cardiovascular system they are elastic tubes and they are thin walled so that we can apply this analysis to them because the uh, the walls of or the the tubes uh, can be bent easily so the forces that develop in these tubes they are generally tangential uh, in nature because the uh, the vessels they offer very little resistance to the uh, bending and we consider because the, the geometry is cylindrical so it is a axisymmetric geometry as a result no shear forces are generated consequently only normal forces exist in the axial which is the axial direction or the or in a cylindrical tube uh, so in the axial direction the forces will be in this direction and in the angular direction or circumferential direction so the stress in the circumferential direction is also known as hoop stress hoop stress is normal stress in the circumferential direction. So, if we consider uh, a half part of the tube, then the stressage on these portions in this direction is the circumferential tube or if we take a just a small angular portion of the tube, then these stressage or this stress is known as sigma theta and uh, it is called hoop stress. The other stress that will be important is uh, longitudinal stress in the axial direction. So, you also call it 
axial stress okay now hoop stress we can find by a force balance on a part of the tube so if we consider a let us consider a semicircular tube the thickness of the tube is say t and the radius is r and we consider a uh, a depth of the tube or length of the tube say uh, dz the internal pressure or p is what we call transmural pressure which is the difference between inside and outside pressure so the pressure uh, if the two sides are pressure P1 and P2, then what we consider that the transmural pressure P x along this direction normal to it will act. The pressure acts normal to the surface everywhere, correct? And the outside pressure, uh, the difference we have considered, so the outside pressure is zero here. Now, if we take this as x direction and this as y direction and do the force balance in let us say x direction then what we will have is uh, p into the area on which it is being applied so the internal area is this area so if we uh, draw this area is this area which is this distance is 2r and the other distance is delta z so we will have p 2r dz where r is the radius of the channel this is equal to t and the hoop stress in this is sigma theta so sigma theta into the area of uh, these two so there are two uh, parts of the tube here and these parts are uh, the small area and this is small area this distance is t and this uh, the length is dz so 2t dz sigma theta dz dz will cancel out and what we have is uh, 2 and 2 will also cancel out sigma theta is equal to P R over T, which is the hoop stress. So we find out a relationship for the hoop stress in terms of the transmural pressure, the radius of the vessel, and the thickness of the tube for a thin wall cylindrical tube. For the circumferential stress, if the vessel is closed ended. So for the closed ended vessel, if we can draw a uh, small schematic of the closed ended vessel, uh, then uh, we can do a force equilibrium or force balance.
in axial direction then we will have p into pi r square so what will be the area the in inner area of the tube that will be uh, putting a pressure uh, no, uh, that will be applying a force and then uh, this will be balanced by uh, the axial stress sigma z into 2 pi r into t so pi and pi will cancel out and r and r will cancel out so we will have sigma z is equal to pr by 2t however if the vessel is open ended then there is no uh, axial stress and sigma z is equal to 0 from there we can also see that sigma z is equal to sigma theta by 2 for a close ended vessel the epsilon for this tube will be equal to epsilon uh, the change will be in the radius of the tube so the epsilon r will be dr over r or delta r over r and epsilon theta will be 2 pi r plus delta r minus 2 pi r over 2 pi r so 2 pi 2 pi will cancel out and that will also equal to be delta r over r that will be epsilon theta so we will have a relationship between uh, epsilon theta is equal to sigma theta over E which is P R by T E and that is equal to delta R over R because which, which is what epsilon r is so we can draw, find a relationship uh, that p r square over e t is equal to the deformation of the tube which is subjected to a, uh, a internal pressure of p for a thin wall tube now uh, the assumption of thin wall tube is good enough when uh, the ratio of the thickness and the channel radius is less than 0.1 or so. However, for the thicker uh, walls, the thick wall analysis needs to be performed and one need to take into account the stress variation in the walls of the tube. For many cardiovascular application this might be the case. So we will briefly look at uh, the, the formulation that can be developed for the thick wall tubes and uh, as the arterial walls are theater that means their movement in the axial direction is restricted. So the only plane strain formulation or two dimensional strain formulation in the r and theta direction need to be considered. So, for the equilibrium condition, let us consider uh, a part of the tube. So, uh, we have a tube which have a thick wall and the inner radius is R1 and the outer radius of the tube is R2. And we consider a small angular portion which has the thickness r and it subtends a angle of d theta at the center the the length of the tube that we consider is dz d 
the internal pressure is P and we consider only transmural pressure here. So, because of that we will have a, say we can draw this uh, element here for clarity and this subtends an angle of d theta at the center the stress edge in this r sigma r and sigma r plus d sigma r and the hoop stress or the angular or uh, stress is sigma theta. Now uh, let us balance the force in the radial direction. So if we have a force Then uh, if we consider this direction, so along this direction uh, the force will be at this surface the force is the stress on this direction that stress will be applied in this direction my apologies. So sigma r plus d sigma r into the area of this surface which is r plus dr d theta into dz minus r uh, sorry sigma r then this is multiplied by the r, r is the radius at this place and d, dr is this distance. So this radius is r and sigma r, r d theta dz. Now the force sigma theta will have a component in the radial direction. So if you look at this angle this is d theta by 2. So the force component along this direction is uh, sigma theta sin d theta by 2. So we will have another force sigma theta into the area which is uh, dr into dz multiplied by sine d theta by 2 and there are two components so we will multiply this by 2 this is equal to 0. Now uh, we can straight away cancel out dz from this and we also assume that sin d theta by 2 is equal to d theta by 2 because d theta is a small angle and we also will neglect higher order terms. So we will neglect the multiplication of d sigma r and dr because that will be a smaller uh, in magnitude uh, term. So we will have sigma r and sigma r which will basically cancel out. So we will have sigma r dr plus r d sigma r minus sigma this term is already cancel out minus uh, 2 2 will cancel out so we will have sigma theta dr is equal to 0 that will give us 
सिग्मा आर माइनस सिग्मा थीटा ओवर आर प्लस डी सिग्मा आर ओवर डी आर इज इक्वल टू जीरो सो दिस इज द फर्स्ट इक्वेशन दैट वी विल गेट एज ए रिजल्ट ऑफ द इक्लिब्रियम कंडीशन सो दैट से इज द डेरीवेटिव ऑफ रेडियल स्ट्रेस प्लस द डिफरेंस बिटवीन द रेडियल एंड रूप स्ट्रेस डिवाइडेड बाई आर द सम ऑफ दिस टू इज इक्वल टू जीरो सो दिस इज द इक्लिब्रियम कंडीशन नाउ वी सब्सटीट्यूट द कंपेटिबिलिटी कंडीशंस इन दिस सो इफ वी एज्यूम दैट यू इज द रेडियल डिस्प्लेसमेंट ऑफ द इन द ट्यूब इंस्टेंटेनियसली और द लोकल डिस्प्लेसमेंट इन द ट्यूब सो एप्साइल एन आर इज इक्वल टू डी यू बाई डी आर एंड एप्साइल एन थीटा विल बी एज विल बी और द एंगुलर स्ट्रेन विल बी इक्वल टू टू पाई आर प्लस यू माइनस टू पाई आर डिवाइडेड बाई टू पाई आर सो दैट विल बी इक्वल टू यू बाई आर नाव फ्रॉम द प्रीवियस स्लाइड वी हैड द इक्वरियम कंडीशन डी सिगमा आर ओवर डी आर प्लस सिगमा आर माइनस सिगमा थीटा ओवर आर इज इक्वल टू जीरो इफ वी सब्सटीट्यूट दोज वैल्यूज हेयर and also substitute the values of epsilon r and epsilon theta then we will have so first let us find out d uh, if we substitute sigma r there then we will have sigma r is equal to e over 1 minus nu squared into epsilon r is du by dr plus nu u by r and epsilon sigma theta will be e by 1 minus nu squared epsilon theta is u by r plus nu du by dr if we substitute this in here we also need to find out d sigma over dr so let us do that uh, e by 1 minus nu square will be uh everywhere so that can be cancelled so we can write d2 u by dr2 plus nu by r du by dr minus nu u by r square which is differentiation of 1 over r plus now we substitute sigma r and sigma theta here so we will have uh, sigma r is 1 over r du by dr plus nu u by r square minus sigma theta over r so u by r squared minus nu over r du by dr is equal to 0 now what we will have is d2 u over dr2 nu by r du by dr is cancel we have plus 1 over r du by dr that is the only term in a uh, first order dif uh, in differential term and then these two terms will cancel out and we will have minus u by r squared is equal to 0 so this is a relationship 
for the displacement uh, and uh, say strain so if we reconstitute or uh, recast it it can be recast or rewritten as d by dr is equal to 1 over r d by dr of u r is equal to 0 so uh, one can find out this equation or one can integrate this equation and get u is equal to c1 r plus c2 r in this form one can get an expression for u for the displacement and if we substitute back this in uh, uh, substitute this in back into sigma r and then we can have boundary conditions at sigma r is equal to minus p at r is equal to r1 and at 0 at r is equal to r2. So one can obtain the two constants c1 and c2 and from that one can obtain sigma r, sigma theta and so on and so forth. Okay. So uh, that is the analysis for thick walled cylindrical tubes and from this analysis one can obtain a relationship uh, uh, for the displacement or for the deformation in the thick wall tubes as a result of a transmural pressure P. Uh, it, this relationship has been used to measure the properties of the material rather. So one can measure the displacement for a known transmural pressure and from that displacement one calculates the properties of the material for example Poisson's ratio and uh, the elastic modulus and so on. So in summary what we have looked at is that how the hoop stress or how the deformation of a uh, thin walled and thick walled tube can be measured or can be found out can be calculated uh, for, for a given transmural pressure. And for that we also looked at some of the basics or we have reviewed the basics of solid mechanics uh, and the relationship between a stress and a strain for, uh, uh, for, for uh, normal stressage and shear stressage and uh, the bulk modulus and so on and so forth. We have looked at the general Hooke's law. Uh, so hope uh, you have all uh, uh, you can uh, Remember now the basics of the solid mechanics and if you find any difficulty you can discuss uh, while the course is on or you can review uh, your solid mechanics uh, notes or books uh, that you have studied in your first year undergraduate courses. Thank you.